Hello, everybody, and welcome to this edition of PsyCast. I'm your host, Robert Marcy, and I'm joined here with Bill Montana and Mystic Alexandre. So, uh, Bill, go ahead and take it away. Hey, how is everybody? So, tonight we've got uh, Mystic Alexandre on the other line. He'll be joining us here shortly. Um, first, we want to cover uh, the new stuff that's coming out this week, which I don't think there's much of anything except for I put out Mystic Energy 8 and Psychic Work 3 a couple weeks ago. That's about the only thing new I've got. Um, Robert, do you have anything new? I would say, uh, yeah, the only thing is is that uh, when I mentioned uh, Doc Hilfer's dream book, I know I'm, I'm all over it, um, he just released out a unannounced bonus with it by none, none other than yours truly. Well, not yours truly, but uh, Michael Weber. Michael Weber oh. added a really fantastic addition to it. And uh, if I remember correctly, Michael Weber actually did a, uh, you know, he works as a consultant for a lot of movies and uh, TV shows pertaining to magic. And uh, and this right here, it's kind of like it runs along the same theme as, uh, I think it was The Illusionist. I think it was like a dream sequence. So he put a really cool bonus on top of that. And uh, I can't wait to check it out. Um, But... uh, He's going to be adding that here in, a, in the next uh, few days. So really, really cool. Really, really cool. But other than that, I haven't seen anything that really <coughs> caught my attention. Um, other than I, I just I was just rereading uh, Scryer Speaks. Uh, he just came out with that a, a few months ago. And uh, there's a lot of gems that Neil Scryer put in there. And an invisible touch routine that will just knock your socks off. I, I know, I know, Bill, that you really liked it. Yeah, I got them all. Yeah. So, um, but uh, not, not nothing else that I see that you know really caught my attention. Yeah, other than our new stuff that we put out, and then you got the uh, spirit catalog coming out, or that's already out. You check the Facebook yeah. page, you'll see it there. Big download yeah. link for the fortune teller products I make, which are very rare. I don't make a lot of anything. But that's really, I mean, that's really about it. I mean, I didn't see anything. I think uh, Alex has got something new, right? Uh, hello, guys. Hey. Hey. What are you doing? Uh, do I have something new? Um, I, I do have, not yet, not yet, yeah, yet to be released, uh, um, I have a couple of little things that I'll be putting out uh, through uh, library.com. I have a a page there. If you go to library.com and you search uh, Mystic Alexandre, you'll find some of my work there. Um, I have some things uh, that I'm uh, holding back still uh, that were released in the past that I I haven't brought back out, and and I got a couple of new things. uh, coming up, but I'll, I'll just um, I'll t- there are more metaphysical type things that uh, psychic entertainers will be able to use and, and mentalists too. Uh, but you'll see it popping up at the uh, Mystic Alexandre section of Library dot com uh, pretty soon. I'd say in the next uh, week or two. Um, so there's some uh, interesting metaphysical experience uh, experiments and things like that that I'll be putting out in a couple of PDFs. But that's a, that's about it for now. And you, Robert, you mentioned uh, Michael Weber. I mean, uh, I, mm-hmm. I, I love I love Michael. I mean, he's fantastic. A few years ago, he was uh, very generous with his time, and he was helping me with a um, with a big book that I was going to put out. Um, and um but it's uh that book is also uh, on hold it's unreleased at this point so i've been mm-hmm. holding on to it for a few years but he helped me a lot and uh michael is just incredibly creative incredibly knowledgeable and um and i just uh, i love uh, i loved getting his help uh on that particular project it was the eyes and minds book uh but it uh, i haven't put that one out yet by the way, Eyes and Minds is the uh, address of my w- website, eyesandminds.com. Cool. So um, I've been I've been enjoying the podcast. I think you guys are doing a, a, gr- a great job here, and uh, it's it's been interesting to listen to um, 
to uh, to you guys in these. I think what three, four. Uh, today's the fourth, right? The fourth sidecast. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the fourth, one. fourth one. Yep. Yeah, and um, yeah, it's been great. Enjoyed lis- listening to Tom uh, the other day. It was on the third um, sidecast. That was uh, that was cool. And, yeah, it was uh, fun working with him out in Vegas too. Yeah, that that was interesting. Yeah. Tom's a unique guy, very uh, intelligent, very um, very creative, incredibly creative. So it was interesting to listen to uh, to his section of the um, of the workshop that we did out there. It was great. Yeah, and largely uh, self taught too. So he wasn't influenced by a lot of the, uh, the pre existing stuff. So the ideas come out a little bit fresher. Interesting stuff. Yeah, he does. He, I mean, he's a real out of out of the box thinker, and sometimes a lot of those types of performers who are self taught come out with the really unique and original ideas. Um, you know, like Tom Phoenix. He's, I mean, he's self taught. You know, another uh, performer. He's, I mean, he's a magician, but a lot of you know his name, Leonard Green. Leonard Green is also self taught. He never really read any books or anything like that on how to, you know, do card magic or or anything like that. And so because of that, he came up with his own ideas and routines. And, of course, you know, we all know that (laughs) a lot lot of the stuff that he came up with is just just mind-boggling. I mean, they're beautiful. Have you met, have you, any of you guys met him in person? I I haven't, and uh, and I'm a big fan of Leonard Green. He's, I think he's a guy's fantastic man, and oh, I yeah. have a lot of. Uh, I think I have everything that he's he's put out his DVDs and things, and um, and I just love his stuff. I, I love doing yeah, he's a, lot a real of, gentleman. Uh, gam- yeah, I love doing a lot of gambling demonstrations as well. You know, just uh, um, things like that, and um, and 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 I've studied uh, his work a lot, and I, I I just love it. And he's so fun to watch, man. That guy is great. Hmm. <clears throat> but I've never met him. I've never met him in person. Yeah, I, I, I have. Uh, I saw him at a uh, convention when I when I was still relatively young, still going through high school, and um, he came out to Ohio, and uh, I had I had the pleasure to spend you know a couple hours with him, and uh, wow, just fantastic. listening to him talk and and. A lot of stuff, he really gave me a boost as to, like, you know, doing some really nifty card magic and uh, things of that nature, like, you know, the laser deal. I practice that so much now, I can just do it, you know, in my sleep. <laughs> you know? Yeah, the laser deal. <laughs> yeah, I love that. It's just just, just beautiful. So, um, but, uh, but, yeah, he's really, I mean, uh, he's a class act. On stage and off stage. All right. Yeah, but he came up towards uh, the Cleveland area, right? Yeah, it was actually in uh, Canton, Ohio. Yeah, I say it's like four hours from me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> but real—I mean, real class act. Yeah, I, I didn't even hear about it when he came in. I heard about it after, but I didn't hear about it before, so I missed that one. Uh huh. Yeah. So. I did get to catch uh, Pavel when he came through on his last U.S. tour before he died. Right. That was kind of cool. Just to, right. I mean, you know, if you can learn Cirque Magic, learn from somebody that actually knows this stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he did do one mentalism, mental magic trick that I thought was really cool. That it was just odd. But, you know, the king of silk magic doing a little mentalism. But, yeah, you yeah. <laughs> know. It was an interesting little uh, piece. Wow. So, um, so Alex, uh, I, do, would you mind just you know, giving us like a little sneak peek uh, on this uh, new new work that's coming out here? Well, I have some meta. You know, I work in the um, I, I, lately in the past few years more so because I do I do uh, some corporate stuff for uh, for some of the networks, you know, t- TV groups like um, the Discovery Channel and. Uh, you know MGM and places like that that I have connections with. So I've done uh, corporate stuff with them. 
uh, over the years, uh, you know, performed for uh, President uh, Jimmy Carter uh, a few times, uh, also the, the Secret Service. And, uh, but I do a lot of metaphysical uh, work as well. I'm a reader in uh, the biggest um, metaphysical store down here where I live, and, um, and uh, I do a lot of that. And I, I do a lot of um, um, workshops. Uh, you know, when when you guys uh, when Bill was down here actually uh, last year, we did some workshops uh, in some of the metaphysical stores. So I do a lot of that. And uh, one of one of the things I have coming out is um, is some meta- metaphysical uh, exercises. Now um, I I've used a couple of them in my in my workshops, but usually I don't. Um, perform effects uh, per se in the, in the in the workshops or anything like that it's i'm at, you know i'm a, I'm a reiki master i'm a qigong practitioner instructor i'm involved with the metaphysical community so i go into uh, different things but um as um you know to to maybe tell a story or to uh, to to demonstrate a um you know a, a metaphysical point or something like that I will sometimes use um, s- uh, somewhat of an effect, and uh, and I and I do use cards, of course, uh, tarot cards, uh, Lenormand cards, and and regular playing cards for cartomancy work, um, and um, and one of these things that I'm putting out uh, in a PDF uh, has to do with metaphysical uh, presentations with uh, with playing cards and metaphysical presentations. And there's a couple of – it's metaphysical presentations with playing cards, but there are a couple of bonuses on there that don't involve playing cards at all. And it's a whole different approach, as you guys know. You know, it's not – it doesn't come across – at all as any kind of quote unquote trick you know you don't you don't you don't use it as a trick at all so anyway uh it'll be a pdf that'll be discussing some of that and then there's something else that uh that uh, that i've done uh, for many years and i talked to bill about this um i don't know maybe about a month or two ago which is um a demonstration of visible energy um so in in um in a, in a in a quiet environment with uh with uh, a, an audience of any size could be 1 could be 10 could be 30 um there's a bit of meditation going on there's uh, music uh, playing the the atmosphere is there and at that point um there's a visible um uh, demonstration of a visible demonstration of energy so people can see the energy um i was doing a um um a workshop in one of the uh the metaphysical stores down here and i do uh there's um there's a there's a there's a period there's a moment that i do a particular type of healing i'm not going to get into uh, to details uh on that particular type of healing here um and it affects people in many different ways and i do it for the group and i had this um uh, a, a, a couple of people say that they could see the they could see they could see the energy around me um uh, you know as as a form of light um so that was uh was interesting and it reminded me of something i had done in the past uh that has to do uh, with that you know so it's um, you can the, the audience will see uh energy so it's uh, something that I'm I'm I'm, also, I'm going to talk to Bill more about it, but uh, yeah, that's the one he talked to me about in uh, Vegas on Vegas too. Correct, yeah, but uh, but uh, these these are the new uh, couple of things I'll be uh, bringing out uh, in the next few weeks uh, through Library.com, and um, and I may uh, bring a couple of older uh, e-books, you know, stuff that were maybe published back in the early 2000s, you know, and um, uh, ten, 10 years, fifteen years ago, and 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 um, and you know, bring some of that stuff out. You know, uh, do a little rewriting on it, maybe add, add a thing or two to it, and uh, so that's basically it that I have. Uh, I don't I don't focus too much on putting out uh, products, you know, to, or 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 manuscripts and things of that nature. I've always seen that kind of. Um, that kind of um, release as um, 
you know, you just you, you put stuff out there, you share information uh, with with people, and uh, you're not making a lot of money doing it. Um, but it's no, interesting never. to put it's interesting to put some of your work out there. It's interesting to share some of this stuff and try to, in in even small ways, uh, shift or share. Uh, the way uh, you do, you know, you approach your 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 mentalism or your magic or your metaphysical work or whatever, and and maybe try to shift a little bit um, or share with people how you see it, how you do it. I have an ebook on Library.com called uh, Ganjue, um, and the thing with Ganjue is that it's not, you know, in fact, I, I mentioned right there on the uh, in, in in the in the ad copy. That if you um, you you have to, to you have to come across um, the, the routines that come across if, uh, effectively uh, it, only if they're presented with an air of believability. So if the person doesn't intend on presenting these demonstrations that are in that uh-huh. ebook, um, I, I ask them not to purchase the manuscript because, uh, with with the exception of a couple of things. Uh, there's going to be little information there for them to use. So unless they want to come across as as, as real and 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 you know do that kind of work, I, I recommend they don't they don't buy it. But um, but yeah, so you know it's 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 that kind of work um, that I'll be putting out here on um, on Library.com soon. But I'll talk to Bill about that other uh, visible energy thing. Because I think there's more more we can do with it. Wonderful. Wow. Well, that's about it. I mean, uh, you know, as far as releases. But uh, as I was saying, uh, and I, I kind of lost my train of thought here for a second. But you know, you don't make a lot of money with this stuff. So you know, you get some money into your PayPal, and guess where you put it? You know, you put it right back into the magic uh, community. You, you end up buying other people's work. You know. You go on library.com, for instance, there's so much, so much work there. And then, you know, you, you mentioned Doc Hilford in the beginning of the, the, pod, the, the podcast here. Um, you know, there's so many people putting material out that, um, you know, you kind of get some of this um, money into PayPal and you just put it right back into the, into the community. And you learn other things, you know, you keep up with other, other people's work and, you know, I'm I'm constantly reading. I'm constantly buying stuff and checking out new books. And when new people pop pop up, you know, I like to look at what they're doing. So um, the the learning experience is ongoing; it never ends. You, know? you always see, you always end up finding something, or seeing something, or reading something that is interesting, mm-hmm. whether positively or negatively. You know. <laughs> or stuff you shouldn't do, or you end up finding a presentation angle that's interesting. So I, I like it. I like doing that. But I don't put that much focus on releasing material. In fact, for for a number of years, I was just too busy performing and, and doing stuff. And I I I had taken some of the ebooks and things I had. Uh, on the market out there, I, I took them off the market, and, and for for a few years, it, it just remained off because I was just uh, involved with other things. So I don't put a lot of focus on 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 new, new releases. Oh, and so I yeah, I think uh, you're passionate about it, <laughs> huh? Well, I think at some you, point it's important to catalog your work. What was that? Sorry, At some point, it's it's important to catalog your work. Yeah, yeah, uh, you know, as well. Um, it's it's all here, you know, and uh, in my computer, you know, and on on the cloud, you know, it's, I got a lot of material, a lot of things I've written. Like I, I mentioned earlier, the book that I was uh, that. Um, um, Michael Weber was helping me me with. It, it was never released. So I got I got things that I'd never put out, but you know that's that's the thing. I just I don't focus that much on being uh, on being out there and putting uh, putting stuff that I do out there all the time. In fact, there's a lot of stuff that I use that I I don't know. I kind of don't. You know, I've shared some 
a lot of things, I guess, or but, but some things with, uh, with friends, you know, um, people like you guys. But, um, but then, you know, I mean, sometimes you feel like what's the, you know, kind of what's the point, you know, you put some, something out there and, um, depending on what it is. And in fact, a lot of this sort of metaphysical or mentalism stuff, uh, some people don't, don't, uh, don't appreciate it. And, uh, you know, we see this happening with Bill every now and then, and it's uh, so you figure, well, why, why put it out? I'm not going to make any real money off of this, so mm-hmm. so I'll just share it with uh, friends, you know, and, and perform it and, and do it myself and and enjoy it that way. Yeah, I mean, you know, some of the stuff I'm putting out now is just stuff to catalog uh, the stuff I've you know, acquired over the years, and learned. So you know, next guy that comes into the field like me. <laughs> doesn't have to go through what I went through for 30 years trying to learn this stuff. <laughs> you know, he's yeah. got a big repository there. <laughs> because, I mean, right. it's face some of this metaphysical stuff is harder to learn than mentalism because it's not in any of the books. Yeah, harder, harder to learn and at the same time, you know, almost uh, effortless in, in, in execution. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if you can, you know, once you understand what you're doing, and there's a yeah. there's a point where you know finding that information is kind of difficult these days. I mean, like you mentioned, books. Oh yeah, yeah. The books I'm looking for now are you know 300 and up. And they're yeah, old. Yeah, it's not, I mean, they're not even yeah, new. I mean, they're you know 1834, 1831. I mean, they're just hard to find. Yeah, yeah, and um and a lot of this uh, knowledge too comes from comes from doing, you know. So people who are involved or have knowledge with the metaphysical field, um psychic field, that kind of stuff, um you know, things come out through there. Yeah. You know, ideas and different things come out through there and some things like I mentioned earlier are just shared amongst friends, you know, they're not they're not put out or, or released, and and um, and a lot of the material is based on uh, on real stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, very real stuff. It's just uh, finding the finding the background. I'm looking for background references for some of that, and it's brutal. <laughs> yeah, it's fun yeah. stuff to do. I mean, it's it's a it's it's fun to do. Um, there's usually uh, a point to doing it. You know, you don't just do it to to look good or you don't just do it to demonstrate your powers. I mean, there's usually a point to it. It reminds me of um, uh, Baba's book, um, you know. Which uh, all, yeah, all, voodoo, all the, voodoo magic. Yeah, voodoo <laughs> magic. All, all that stuff in there, you know, that uh, he wrote. Uh, into that book everything had a point there's a there's a reason to everything you know there's a demo for um you know in telling a story or demonstrating uh you know uh, a point or a philosophical angle or um, you know it was very very interesting book i mean it's a book i was just looking at a few weeks ago uh, here in my library um it's a fantastic book baba's book Mm -hmm. um but that kind of stuff, you know. And that's Baba Giddy Nebo for you guys that don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. Is that, is that book uh, still on sale? I don't think so. Is no. It? Not that I know of. I don't think he's re-released it. Yeah, I, th- I thought I saw this web. The website was still up, or you could still find it. But uh, but I don't know if it's. I don't any, think he's maintaining it anymore. anymore. He had, uh, yeah, he had some any health issues link. and stuff. Yeah, I don't know if any of the links are active or anything, but but yeah, very very interesting book and uh, highly highly recommended. You know, it really is uh, a book that if you see a copy, buy it. You're not going to see too many copies of it. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but you know, um, most and the interesting thing about Baba is he's actually a Baba in, in uh, what voodoo, right? In Voodoo? Yeah. I mean, he's actually a Baba. But he also does magic, and he combines the two together, and it works really well. 
<laughs> yeah, absolutely. And there's some stuff in that in that book that's just very subtle that you wouldn't necessarily catch on to on the first read, you know. That's pretty much the core of the entire thing. It's brilliant work. <laughs> yeah, no, it's beautiful work. It's beautiful work. It's well thought out, and like I said, it, it tells a story. You know, there's a point behind everything that he's doing there. There's a, a deeper, you know, um, connection or a deeper um, angle to it. You know, it's nice. Yeah, and there's a... I don't know if you want to talk about that. The, uh, the book test you used that you got from uh, Webin and Circle, I believe. Yeah, uh, well, you know, the things that I don't want to talk about it, but <laughs> the things that I do uh, get like that, I, um, I I just try to use them in a different way. And primarily, I use them in a different way because a lot of the presentations and the and the way the the effect or the thing or the item was created was for mentalists, you know, kind of mentalists or bizarre magicians and stuff to use. So um, I don't uh, necessarily like some of the way that's presented, you know. So um, I always try to find my own way, I mean, to, 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 to use it. If I see a prop that I can, that I can use, whether, uh, you know, in a workshop or whatever situation, um, then I will get it and, uh, and I will use it in a different way usually than it's meant to be used. Because like I said, a lot of the stuff, like if, you know, you look at the, a lot of the uh, effects and stuff that come out, they, um, and the props, the presentations are very, uh, very much for mentalists, you know, I'm, I'm going to decipher a word here, or I, you know, I can see these words that are, that you're reading on the page if, in the case of a book or, you know, whatever whatever the prop is, you know, it's 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 more uh, more geared towards 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 that. So sometimes I will see a prop that I can I can use, and I will you know I will get it and use it in uh, in my own way, in a different way, that'll serve me. And I think uh, some some people do that. I mean, the the people who are uh, working and performing, I suppose, uh, are doing that as well. You know, people personalize the uh, the uh, the items that they buy, you know, in the market. Yeah, that's what I, but, that's uh, what I was getting at is with that one, that particular piece. Yeah, you know. But having said all this stuff about you know props or, uh, I mean, sometimes a, a, I see a very interesting prop and I don't do anything with it. You know, and I bring it into the metaphysical world, world, and and I don't I don't do anything. There's, I don't need to do anything to it. It just looks good, or it's an interesting. Uh, it, it could be just a, a talking piece. You know to be an icebreaker or something, you know, it's just something interesting to have there. And I don't, sometimes I don't do anything to it because, um, in talking about, uh, effects or, or, or using certain mentalism props or bizarre magic props in, uh, in the metaphysical world, you don't really, you don't need, you don't need anything like that. You know, you really don't. I think well, that's a lot why of, I was going to say a lot of the work, you, a lot of the work you do, Bill, which has to do with energy and different things like that. Yeah, you can be directly applied to um, to a, a metaphys to the metaphysical uh, world, you know, in the New Age shops or workshops or things like that. But a lot of these, um, but but a lot of it, um, you know, as far as effects are concerned, you don't really, you don't you don't really need it. You know, you can. You can do, um, well, like some of the stuff you do, you know, like the energy stuff or uh, uh, some of the mystic energy releases that you've had. They're very, very useful in uh, in a metaphysical sense. And people are getting a real experience. Mm -hmm. uh, they're getting And a, that's where you take the prop experience. and provide the experience with it. I mean, that's why I like unusual props. Yeah, yeah, me too. I, I love that stuff. And I, I think one of the most uh, the most important props was a good box, you know, just to put the stuff in. <laughs> yeah, it's one of the hardest things to find too. 
Yeah, I mean, sometimes on the, the Magic Cafe, I, I hear you know people talking about um, they're not big fans of you know psychics and and people who work in the metaphysical uh, community, but um, you hear some people, you, you read some people talking about uh, as if they as if they know you know how this how this how this field works, and they and they really. Uh, it's clear yeah, that they don't you, you are if you are involved in the metaphysical community if you you know I've been involved in the metaphysical community since the eighties you know since the late eighties and so uh you you can it's clear that they don't either you know they don't maybe they have some, maybe they read some stuff that has <laughs> to have to do with that or they might have uh I know, done. I don't know, done some kind of reading somewhere, but they, you know, they wouldn't survive in, a, in any of the shops down here as a reader. You know, no, I mean, I can count like, on the hands how many times in thirty years I've seen somebody use a billet in a metaphysical shop. <laughs> One hand. <laughs> uh, I've I've never seen it. <laughs> I saw in some spiritual right. stuff, but you don't usually see it. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah. a lot of the thinking uh, a while back was that. Mentalists are to use billets in metaphysical work. Eh, that's not. Get, move along, Junior. <laughs> I mean, you can, yeah, I mean, but you got to use them very cleverly, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. For me, I mean, it's. Um, to me, those things are connected, you know, like magic, mentalism, bizarre magic, things like that in the metaphysical world. I've always been interested in the. And the occult, you know, tarot cards. I've, I've always found those things interesting, you know, Ouija boards and all that. And I've always liked magic, you know, ever since I was mm-hmm. a kid. I've, I've always enjoyed magic. So to me, well, I think you can uh, merge the the groups there, but you're gonna do it in such a way that it doesn't look like you're creating an effect. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. I, I uh, there's a real connection for me um, with those things, you know. Um, uh, to me, it's it's all magical in, in in a different way, I suppose, and and I'm interested in all of that. So um, I've always been involved with both, but it's very uh, it's different when you when you're working in the when you're doing the new age market, you know. Like we mentioned, and it's a slower place too. I mean, the pace is slowed down. Yeah, yeah, and it's a. Um, it's a different result that you want as well. You know, you're not going to yeah, have I mean, people uh, clapping. You know. Yeah, I mean, I got a standing ovation once and thought I screwed the gig up. <laughs> <laughs> no, people will do that. You know, at the end of a workshop or whatever. But, but uh, you know, uh, the different things you. Well, do it was the end of a lecture, but I mean, I've never gotten that before. It was just bizarre. Yeah. Yeah. Not in that crowd, you know. You know that was a hardcore metaphysical crowd too. It was just, it was strange. I'm doing a lecture on mind control. Had a couple of mind control devices with me. It was a good lecture. I mean, it really was. I was on that day, but it was just uh, the standing ovation at the end kind of threw me off. And every time I performed there, they asked, you know, show me a magic trick because they know I make props from magicians. So you know, uh-huh. so I don't have, I don't have the, I don't have that issue to deal with, you know. Oh, you're a magician? Well, I just don't do anything magical in the, the, the lights or in the case if they want to see the trick, I might do card on ceiling. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people know I do magic stuff as well. Um, you know, but it's... Um, but they're separate. Yeah, you know, they're separate. Yeah, and then, you know, we can also use certain magical effects in, in a physical context, but they don't, when we get done with them, they don't look the same. No, no, it's 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 not. We have to do not. with uh, a lot of it. A lot of I'll say I'll just say it. A lot of that metaphysical stuff has to do with intention. How do you intend to play it? You know, and you're not going to be focused on yourself. You're focused on the audience. You know, it's all audience focused, which I think is different than a lot of the the mentalist stuff because the mentalist. Or the magic guys, you know, practice so hard and long on their show to get everything perfect, they forget about the audience. And then in, you know, metaphysical stuff, it's completely the other way around. You know, our entire focus is on the audience. And less less on what actually what we're doing, because that's why some of the routines are three hours. (laughs) Well, in in giving people... um 
giving people an uh, well when i say giving people an experience of course in both magic mentalism and the metaphysical you're giving you want to give people an experience but the metaphysical you're giving them tools too that they can use to uh, to, to feel better to uh, or to better themselves there's a lot of things that uh, you can do that uh, don't require any kind of quote unquote effects necessarily you know there might be an effect there but it's no, it's not what you thought it was, not, right? And it and it doesn't look at all like like that, you know. And it doesn't yeah, look at all on other subjects. Yeah, it looks uh, it looks more real than it does, you know, gimmicky. Let's just say. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, like right now, there's I don't know if you saw it. There's been a big discussion on several of the forums on cold reading. Have you seen those yet? Have you ever yeah, called I mean, into that? I I try not to. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I try not. It, it, was, it was hard not to read that stupid stuff. Well, and this is what I was saying uh, before about you. You know, you people talk about how oh, you know, psychics uh, use cold reading and then they do this and they do that, and. Um, and if you were a reader, if and if you were really a reader, I mean, if you did readings, you know, regularly or in, in a particular place, uh, you would um, you would know that it's not. You don't necessarily do that. You don't need to. Yeah, do you don't. That. You don't do. You don't do that. You know. Uh, so there's no. Uh, there's zero. From the way mentalists describe cold reading, there's zero cold reading in in uh, in, in any reading I do. You know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I, I, when people talk about that and they start saying that that's what psychics do, I mean, well, I suppose there are some psychics out there in a, I don't know, in a fair or a, I don't know, uh, I don't know, at a party or something that might be doing psychological readings or. Whatever they may call it. Um, well, I, I, don't, I don't think there's know. anything. I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with studying um, like cold reading. You know, from the no. from the from the fact of like an educational thing. But you got to oh, understand that cold reading is not practical. <laughs> well, I, I think one of the biggest mistakes that you know, in, when when you look at these discussions and over the years, I've, I've been part of a lot of these discussions and you know, on these forums. But I've kind of moved away from that uh, years ago. Is that um, there's this? I don't know. There's this perception that that people in the metaphysical community are just stupid. You know that uh, I don't know. You know, and a lot of these discussions, the people who are discussing these things um, feel that they're so much smarter uh, and so much more educated than. The the I, I suppose the idiots that are that are going to get readings and the idiots who are part of the metaphysical community you can't get away. I, I mean, I would love to do a psychic off. I was mentioning this to Aldi yesterday when I was talking to him. I said it would be funny, you know. One day, I, if I get pissed off enough, I'm I'm going to start challenging people to psychic offs. Uh, you, if you go to uh, to a metaphysical <laughs> store and sit there and do cold reading, you. you you're, listen, you're going to flop. It's going to be. A, it's not going to work out because when you compare that, when you compare somebody sitting there doing a cold reading to somebody doing an actual reading, I mean, it's night and day. You know. So uh, yeah, it, it is. Would, night it and, day. and it's also and there's I, a different context. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I've you know, I, I don't know. It's just different. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, and you know, and, and I've seen people do cold readings at at parties and things and it's and i i suppose there's a a place for it um but i've read a lot of these books you know over the years on on cold reading and it's it's not what i do and it's not what i see other people doing that are doing readings you know uh, so yeah i, I like, say you know when guys talk about like what what i need to read in cold reading i say well you need to go back to herb do it <laughs> Red Hot Cold Reading, because all the books are going to seem to stem from Herb Dewey. All the modern stuff quotes Herb Dewey stuff. Start there, then move on to like Ian Rowland and the other guys. Now, there's no reason to go into that 
unless you have a foundation based on what the original origins of the whole thing are. Yeah. In a, in a magical yeah. mentalism term, you know. Yeah, but like you know, like I was saying, uh, some people I think think that I don't know people in the <laughs> metaphysical community are just you know stupid, and you can't get away with a lot of these these. Uh, a lot of people in these forums seem to suggest that that you know uh, you could get away with uh, a lot of stuff with the with the quote unquote gullible, you know, or the. And it's not yeah, true. well, I don't, I don't think that's not the case true. at all because I, I've done, I've done readings for guys that won the Nobel Prize. <laughs> oh, cancer no, research. Course. I mean, you know, the, these these guys aren't idiots, man. These guys were running big labs, and you know, to them it was a form of entertainment partially, but you know, they were curious. Sure. And, hey, sure, I mean, that's another thing. I mean, when I I, I do readings, even won the Nobel for cancer research, man. <laughs> yeah, I do, I do readings regularly here, and and. Uh, you know, I, people, some people come in just for a bit of fun. Yeah, and I mean, I've done readings for guys who are high-level scientists and stuff. I mean, it's not like, you know, I think some yeah, of I part of it, different. part of it's just that they want to experience this this fringe type thing. You know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that happens. I mean, I'm at the store, and uh, you know, it's a big store, as, as you know, Bill. You've been there, and there's a lot of cool things in there. Sometimes they yeah, have work. It was great store, workshops, man. healings. There's all kinds of things going on there, and and what happens is some uh, the store is quite busy, and they know there's a reader there, and some people just say, "Hey, let's go get a reading." I mean, why not? It's kind of fun. Yeah, and they so got a, a great lecture room in that store too. Yeah, yeah. Well, you did your lecture there. Yeah. You know, one of them. I want but, the chair, uh, man. If they ever get a sell, let me know. I'll buy it. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Uh, I like that lecturer chair. The one that's painted gold in the back. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah it's it's a perfect lecture chair, man. I got a table to go with it, a little camel table, you know. It's kind of a chair, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a beautiful chair. Yeah, but, that's the um, other thing, too. When you're setting up a parlor, let me just say that, there's going to be a couple props that are hard to find. <laughs> One's your reading table, two's your uh, lecturing table, and three is your chair <laughs> for both. Yeah. Difficult to find. <laughs> and boxes. I mean, you know, boxes to put the cars and pendulums and stuff in. Never have enough. Yep. I'm looking around my shop right now and I see like probably eight or nine boxes. You don't need to go. But I think that the props and stuff, I mean, that stuff works well with mental, straight up mentalism too. I mean,. <laughs> You know, yeah, it does. It, it's kind of a mix between bizarre mentalist and you know just really good props. I mean, well, it's the theatrical when, when I'm, props, when I'm, when I'm yeah. talking about props, I'm not talking about like things that do anything. You know, magically. I mean, these are boxes that hold things. Yeah, yeah. it's a theatrical approach. You know, um, you'll have some interesting props and different things, and it's uh, people always love seeing weird things. You know. Whether you're doing straight up, you know, magic, mentalism, whatever you're doing, people people enjoy seeing different things, strange things, mysterious things. They really do, and I mean, I got entire acts based around just that stuff because yeah. it's interesting, you know. It's stuff they're not going to see every time, and also goes straight into the subconscious, so that triggers all kinds of stuff you can do. But you don't yeah, see yeah. that until you get out there and start using these unusual items like saint relics and Buddhist amulets and malas from Tibet and China and, and Shaolin and, you know, all that weird stuff. You don't see it <laughs> until, until you know, you don't see how they, these things react with the audiences until you actually use them, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, even even fairly simple things like, um, you know, things that would be considered kind of risque in a way, like, um, you know, ash for the, the uh, gory rub on themselves as opposed to ash the Saudis rub on themselves, mm -hmm. you know? One's made from burning cow dung, and the other one's taken off a cremation fire, the ganges. <laughs> you know, but each one of those it causes a specific reaction, <laughs> And both of them are considered holy, so you know it's 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 interesting stuff like that. So that's kind of stuff I'm looking for because I want that difference, you know. 
if they can buy it at their local metal physical shop, it's not going to be in my, you know, my repertoire. But if they can go get it, then you they've seen it, you know. Yeah, you know what I have to be said. You put out that uh, what was it, Bill? The psychic um, catalog or something? I still haven't looked at it. I yeah. you put a link on Facebook. I want to check it out. Yeah, yeah, it's got pendulum yeah. boards in it, scrying. Uh, it's got tarot markers, little new tarot markers. Yeah, I have squares. I have a few of those things, and uh, yeah, the zodiac disc. It's use. got a uh, a pendulum rest. I'm using it for a pendulum rest, like a little planchet, mystic hand planchet. I use it for a pendulum rest. We're up for the copper edge. Pretty cool stuff. <laughs> yeah, I, I have to take a look at that catalog. I mean, I do own some of that stuff already, but and I do. Oh, no, I know you do. Mm-hmm. But um, uh, I think it's nice to. Uh, you know, to to have and to put on your put on your table, especially you know if you're doing a um, well anything. I mean, if you're doing a party or an event. Yeah, I mean uh, the new one I made with the zodiac and the mystic eye in the center. It's just kind of small, but it's a nice little piece to do like pencil work or you know. Yep. Uh, little three inch disc or so. But I mean, there's all kinds of that stuff out there that you can get a hold of, but you don't want to buy it from. You don't want the common stuff, you know. You just don't want to come yeah. with stuff that's going to last, you know? Yeah, well, I don't like cheap pendulums, unique. you know? I yeah. like well-made pendulums. I mean, very well-made pendulums. And the price tag of some of those will shock you. <laughs> uh-huh. Like, actually, um, well, what, what's uh, Blackstown's wife? What's her name? Who? Harry Blackstown's wife. Uh, you got me, man. Anybody remember off the top of head? She makes a great pendulum. <clears throat> Solid silver. Uh, I don't remember. Or gold, depending on which one you get. <laughs> uh, Gail. Uh, Gail. Uh, Gail. Black Sam. Gabby. Gail. I think. Yeah, but she makes a great pendulum, you know, a few years ago. You know, but people were arguing, you know, about the price of paying. Why would you pay, you know, six to nine hundred dollars for a pencil? Well, one is not made out of trash. <laughs> Start there. <laughs> but you know, some of those working tools are. I mean, they are expensive. But it's also a working tool. You know, it's stuff we're going to use for the next. I don't know as long as we're performing or working in. You know, whatever we're working in. I'm just not a fan of the cheap Chinese props. <laughs> yeah. And you did something kind of <laughs> cool with my uh, three psychic works where you turn it over to an iPhone app. Yeah, iPhone or iPad. Yeah. Um, I use that. I use that regularly. I mean, I think it's a great um, casual thing to use, and it's... I mean, you can use it in so many ways, but uh, three psychic words is, is awesome. Yeah, it's, it's a little piece with a bunch of letters on it to give you a start of a idea of what they want to talk about. I mean, a lot of people, they won't talk about what they want to talk about anyway until you ask them or you have choose, you use advice like that, and then you'll get indications. You know, yeah, sometimes no, you have to be uh, a little bit closer to the, <laughs> the real work than the, uh, the other guy. Yeah, and I mean, just uh, some of the material you put out is very useful mm-hmm. for everybody. I mean, three psychic words. I mean, if you know, I, I've I've done that in straight up mentalism work that I've done. I've used three psychic words. It's it's perfect for that too. It yeah, fits I mean, in you everywhere. Can, and that's always a lot of my stuff. There's multiple ways to. It's not like it's a one way. Article. No. I mean, like everybody thought that the bridge with the dreamcrafting thing was all about the glass, the water, and the stick. Well, no. <laughs> Take any three objects. You know, you don't you don't need to limit yourself once you understand the process. You know, a lot of it. You know, a lot of my stuff is once you understand the process, you can create the miracles. You know, the, the, just by understanding the process, and you can change and adapt it to fit your style, which is kind of cool. 
you know, so it's not like a very one-sided thing like a lot of the magic and mentalism we saw. Well, you know, when we got into it back in the 70s and 80s, what did you get? You get one-sided stuff. You know, even the Oakland stuff, it was, it was still pretty much, there's only one way to work, you know. It was kind of limiting, actually. And I was yeah. never really a fan of that. I think that's why I branched out and started my own, you know, doing my own thing. Because I just, I just got tired of that, you know, one way tricks. Come on, people. <laughs> this this thing, this move's got to be better, you know, be able to be used for something else. <laughs> or just prop. A lot of times it's just a prop. You use a prop in a different way. Yeah, you can use this stuff in so many different ways. Whatever blows your hair back. But uh, I think a lot of it requires, you know, thought and, you know, breaking away from, like, these common misconceptions, misconceptions that became, you know, the so-called rules. <laughs> you know, when I, when I see so-called rules, I, the first thing I ask is, who made up the rule? <laughs> and then when I go back and trace into it, and I usually find it's not what you thought, you know, the guy's not who you thought he was that made up the rule. It's not, not worth looking at. He's pushing some other agenda. So, you know, I break a lot of rules anyway, so. Well, a lot of times that's where the interesting stuff comes out. Breaking the rules. You know, one of the pieces that you you created that I still use all the time, I was just looking at my tinctures up here, the tincture offering. I love that thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I got several sets of them with cases. <laughs> These little uh, Tibetan and woven sewn cases, I love them. But yeah, I mean that's a that's a great great piece in itself, you know. Yeah, and that's something where that you know that kind of goes back the other way where you work metaphysics into mentalism. Sure. But it can it can also be used in a metaphysical thing, or it could be used in a you know a regular mentalism routine. But it's it's interesting because when you look at metaphysics and mentalism side by side, you know, on one hand they're trying to say it's all fake, and the other hand they're trying to say it's all real. But when you merge the two together, there is something there, you know, something there that's beyond explanation most of the time. Yeah. And I think that's where, you know, that's where we want to get the audience to that point where there really is no explanation other than, I mean, as you said, the one of the biggest thing, a matter of opinion, you know, whether it was real or not. It's good enough. Yeah, the Ting Sha offering is, uh, yeah, it's something that I've been doing for, I, I, there's no reason to ever stop doing it, <laughs> you know. Ting Shahs have been around for so long, and then you can just implement the, the Ting Shahs with this uh, this little moment, which is. Uh, but I love which working nice, with you got, you got a, a visual image there of the unusual gong like bell type thing. You know, with a background story. You got everything you need right there. I mean, that's, you know. Yeah, I've worked that bad boy for a few minutes. I mean, that's not, that's an easy one to work. Because you tell a story about Ting Shaws and how they developed and all that, and you go into this and that. And well, sure, I mean, I've done that. With, sound uh, them, you know, with people who are who don't know what Ting Shaw bells are. So then, you know, you start out, you start out by explaining to them what what, what they are and actually teach them something, which is interesting. But uh, but you know, working with gemstones or working with the, the Ting Sha bells or. Um, it's uh, those things are fun to work with, and I've used them, of course, in both uh, mentalism work, you know, magic mentalism, and uh, metaphysical stuff. Mm-hmm. Those are those are beautiful to look at. People enjoy it, you know, and uh, it's useful. And I like the crossover. You know, when the stuff doesn't really, actually, the stuff I'm getting into now really doesn't fit in either one. It's just kind of like just this weird object that you know. It was kind of a challenge because I take a weird object and I go, okay, let's see what this thing can do. <laughs> yeah, and you'd be surprised what you can get. You can get a weird object to actually do <laughs> without any manipulation, just by sitting it on the table. What can it do sitting on the table? 
A and lot. a lot of those objects, uh, a lot, a lot. And I think I think a lot of the guys that are you know growing up in this newer age of mentalism because they don't have the magic shops, they don't have the old guys walking around, you know, the old curmudgeons going in there and bitching about everything. They miss all the joy. <laughs> You know? Yeah. I mean, you remember how how much fun it was hanging out at Magic Shop? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love it. I love it. It's too bad. There's, I mean, it's just that they're, they're just um, few and far There's between a, now. Yeah, few and far between. I mean, you got Denny up in Baltimore, and we got Vegas, you know, Las Vegas Magic Pro, and then we got Wichita, Kansas. Yeah, but it's great Jesus. hanging out in a place like that, man. It's oh, great. You get to look at all the toys and play with some stuff. And hang out with the exchange of, they want the conversation, it's the exchange of ideas, you know. Oh, you know, you you show something to somebody you've been working on or you, whatever. You just show them something and then they go, oh, you know. I'm, people come up with, um, you know, that's where, that's where a lot of the learning used to happen. You know, a lot of the learning in magic shops, you know, if you hang out in a place like that. It was great. It was great, man. It's yeah, but you got, I mean, you got to hang out with some, you know, legends that were, I mean, the guys were legendary when you were hanging out with them. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of cool. They come in, you couldn't buy, sh- you couldn't buy stuff on the internet, internet, so you had to go into a magic shop. <laughs> so if you were hanging around a magic shop, you'd see all kinds of people coming in there to buy stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But even now, man, I mean, the the top hat and wand there in Vegas, it's just a, it's just such a pleasure to hang out there, you know? Yeah, it is a lot of fun. You got Patrick down there working the counter and uh, Randy and Scott. Yeah, it's a good time. Yeah, yeah. It's just a pleasure to hang out. Like you said, look at the books, look at the toys. Uh, people will come in. You know, you start talking shop. It's great. Mm-hmm. And some of the stuff is way underpriced. <laughs> Sure. Yeah, I mean yeah. they were giving they were giving some stuff away <laughs> when we were there. Remember? Literally giving it away. Uh, the red caps they were giving away. That was a great effect. <laughs> oh, I, I brought that for my nephew here, and uh, it's it's great. I love that. Yeah, I took one look at it. I'm keeping this for myself. This is good. It was, yeah, a, yeah. What was that? Thirty five dollar effect for free. Here, take one. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but uh, it's great hanging out at the shop, man. I can't wait to get back there. Yeah, and there's a lot of uh, well, the gambler store too. I thought the gambler store was great for those guys who've never yeah. been to Vegas. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, and mentalists, you know, magicians, mentalists love going to places like that because you know you go to that gambler store, and I'm telling you, man, there's a lot of little things you you see that will give you some ideas, you know. And plus all the all the decks of cards. I mean, if you do anything with cards, the gambler store there in Vegas, wow! Well, yeah, they got what a thousand de- thousand different types of decks. Tons of stuff, man. Not just the yeah. casino decks, you know, but all the a lot of the magic decks and stuff. So people that that come out through mag- the magic community, you know. Uh, but yeah, it's a great it's a great place, you know. And chips, and they got uh, what's the they got dice what? and all this weird stuff. <laughs> yeah, they got like five, six hundred different types of dice. They got backward tables and you know, poker tables and <laughs> yeah, no, it's great, it's great. You can even buy casino inserts to hold your drink. <laughs> you know, I was I I bought a couple of those because I got a like, handmade desk over here. I was thinking about putting a drink holder in and an ashtray and putting a few of the other. You know, casino type accessories in there, and a yeah, money slot. Uh, you know, yeah, I just thought that was way too cool. A lot of fun. But those are the types of things that I think. Plus, I think all the mentalists, every mentalist, should walk into a, meta, a physical shop at some point. A nice one, like oh, the one sure. in Vegas or the one down there in Miami. Oh, or there's sure. actually two, two in Miami that would spark a lot of thought. <laughs> And they just uh, they just expanded one of them. There's a, a third one here. Well, there's about four or five of them down here, but, but there's a, one that was small, really tiny place, and they just opened uh, a much bigger uh, place um, around close here. So, yeah, I mean, this business is booming, man. Business is booming, you know. 
and um, you know, if you're into that sort of stuff. But yeah, definitely. I mean, it's a t- you know, for magicians and mentalists, going to a metaphysical store is uh, is another kind of toy store. I mean, you'll find I mean, you walk out with uh, things. You walk out with at least a pendulum that looks halfway decent. Sure, and and then and then if you you know what if if you're into appearing and disappearing things or floating things, you'll find tons of stuff in that physical store that you could do that with, you know, um, little props, you know, that you can use for um, for stuff. It's it's great. It's like being in the toy store as well. Yeah, and a good Oriental import shop, you know, that sells like oh, yeah. figures and little Tibetan stuff and that kind of stuff, little bracelets and you know, chaskis. Oh yeah. But that stuff is like one. gold mine. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, the coins and stuff. I mean, yeah. Yeah, but you get Chinese an idea cheap, but the, yeah, the cheap Chinese coins here for I Ching or, the you know, Feng, Feng, Feng Shui. Feng Shui. Feng Shui stuff. Feng Shui stuff's great. There's all kinds of stuff you can do with that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, it's 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 fun. Yeah. And it's way fun. I mean, there's, you, once you get into those things, you start thinking differently. And I think that's the point, you know? You yeah, think, you well, know, how, can so I much... do this, how can I do this uh, this routine with these tumbled stones? Well, yeah, there's something new. There's so much stuff out there, though. You know, I think a lot of, a lot of the a lot of magicians and the mentalists, they just, they just go, ah, man, there's so, many, so much out there already being sold as far as effects, you know, they don't, they don't bother, um, thinking too much out of the, out of the box. But I, I find that fun. I mean, for me, it's fun, you know, to try to think of new ways to do things and puzzles and stuff like that. I enjoy that. So. Mm-hmm. Now, are you going to, are you going to publish your thing on Pagal? Uh, I do have a couple of things. The Pagal, uh, the Pagal, the tick sheet is out. And, uh, but I have, um, I don't know which one you're referring to. I mean, I have a whole reading system with that. And, um, uh, and then, the um, which one are you referring to, Bill? The, the Pi Gal reading system, the, the one that everybody's been watching. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I everybody have, that sees uh, you do it goes, I, I need some of that. Yeah. I have a quick, a quick and easy, a quick and easy, uh, Pygal system, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's another one of the little ebooks that are here, you know, and uh, and hopefully I'll put that out soon. But yeah, you know, whoever's listening and interested in that kind of stuff, I, look look up Mystic Alexandre at uh, library dot com, and, um, and you'll see some stuff there. And I'll be putting some new things up, you know, a week or two. But yeah, d- definitely. In fact, that's already written out. I don't know why I haven't put that out because I I wrote that out for the for the workshop when we did the workshop. So I yeah, you know if that. you expand, I don't know if you expanded it. You were talking about doing a full pie out reading system. I do have that as well. I just uh, I don't, I'm just not sure people will get use out of it. Um, uh, I don't know. Uh, but, I like it. But the quick but. Well, sure, but the quick and easy is uh, is always attractive, you know. Uh, I thought, you know, the, the, quick, the first time I saw the quick and easy, I'm like, what the hell are those little black things, man? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I, I knew everything else. I knew about everything else on the table. I just didn't know what those particular items were, which I thought were way cool. Yeah, yeah man, that was driving that was uh, driving me nuts, man. I was like, those are like, what are they, Shungite? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what I was getting ready to see. And I like that, you know. That's, that's some of my favorite stuff. Yeah. And, you know, some of the stuff, too, I think, both in, in Magic and Mental, is that you really need to see the stuff live. Hmm. And well, first, we had a whole talk. Uh, I think one of your... Uh, we we already did a... I remember we did a recording about this uh, a few months ago, you know. Yeah, yeah I, I I agree. See, if you get a chance, I mean, to see stuff live, go for it. That's the that's the best way to uh, to learn. It's the best way to experience. Right. 
Yeah, but I mean, that's one of the things that I don't think a lot of these guys, I think a lot of the newer guys have missed because they've never seen any of this stuff live. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Which is, uh, which is too bad. Yeah, I mean, you know, when we were out there last time in Vegas, uh, was it Vinny Gallo? The guy that yeah. was naked on Penn and Teller? Yeah, he was doing a lecture. We went to that. That was great. Mm-hmm. It was a great lecture, you know? I mean, it's not my type of thing that I'm going to do every day, but, I mean, the lecture as a whole was really good. You know, I bought his book. <laughs> it was good, you know. He was telling stories about other magicians he's met and stuff. I mean, it's a really cool book. I mean, it's – but you only see this stuff when you get out. You know, that's what it makes these uh, – you, you know, I was asked one time, you know, what about all these old guys that have all these great collections? Well, you know, they acquired most of that in person. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Most of those guys went out and, you know, met Mel Babcock and bought a bunch of stuff. Um that's how they get a hold of all that great stuff. You physically saw it, you know, and that's there's a lot to be said about that, really. Unfortunately, everything changed, and we're stuck with what we got now. But you know, if you get a chance, get out there, get out to see somebody. You know, if you're in Columbus, Ohio, go to Penguin on one step. You know, catch one of the live video lectures they are taping. That's that's fun. I mean, me and Robert's gone out there a couple times. Mm-hmm. Mainly to see our friends, but you know. We got to see Oscar and Cassidy do pre loin thought together. I mean, that was great. That thing is a manual discourse, huh? The whole course on that, you know, particular effect. Multiple versions, it was outstanding. Yeah. For those of you who don't know what it is, cards are placed in the pocket and they tell you what they are, but, um, as they come out. It's pretty cool. Old animal type thing. But yeah, there's all kinds of stuff out there. I just you gotta get out and explore and you know, go to the, the curio shops and the, the little boutique stores. But yeah, if you've uh, never if you're thinking about getting into psychic reading, find the best psychic reader in town and go get a reading. Oh, I love doing that. But you still do it after reader. all these years, don't you? Oh, yeah, I love to get readings. love to see what these people are up to. It's great. Mm -hmm. Whenever there's a new reader in town or if I go somewhere and there's a reader, if I got the the time, I I like to get a reading. Yeah, just to see what they got to say and see if there's, you know. Some of it's interesting, man. Some of it's completely wrong, but, you know, every now and then. Yeah, I enjoy it. I think it's fun. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's fun, so um, I enjoy getting getting readings. Plus, if you get a, if you get a reading from a really good reader and someone who really knows what they're doing, there's a lot to be learned there. <laughs> you know, everything oh, from table set up to introductions to you know exits and all that stuff. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And it's yeah, I was always wanted to you know, get over there and see uh, Ron Martin and uh, Larry Balkin before Larry died, and you know, and Ron died. You know, I wanted to go see them be get reading from those guys. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's a little theatrical experience, you know, getting a, a, a reading, a good. Yeah, reading. that's one thing I really yeah. wanted to do. Is wanted to get one. I wanted to get over there and get a reading from those guys, you know. But never made it over there. Yeah. No, you can tell them I'm into mentalism. I just walk in the door, you know. <laughs> get ready to steal some mojo, baby. Private education that's worth a hundred dollars an hour. What's uh now? Do you have a do you have a, fa- a favorite effect you like to do? <clears throat> a favorite effect that you didn't create, you know, somebody else's. Yeah, um, favorite effect. You know, I think it depends on on the moment, but because uh, I have a few effects that I uh, I like some stuff that Sal Piacente has put out, you know. I like some stuff that, uh, um... I love Sal, yeah. Sal's great, man. He came down here, and then we had such a ball a few years ago. It was, it was so cool. 
um, I like some uh, uh, Richard Osterlin stuff. I mean, the um, I like some. Um, could somebody drop off there, Bill? No, we're here. Um, so effects that I like to perform. Um, I mean, you don't have like a go-to thing for just every crowd, or well, there's a couple of things I do I, that I um, that I'd rather not mention, but uh, okay, but yeah. I do like, right. uh, but I but I do like uh, some Richard Osterlin uh, stuff that I that I, I I like. Look, I like a lot of stuff with cards. So even though I'm a mentalist and even though I do metaphysical work, I do use playing cards a lot. I, I don't see anything wrong with them, you know. Um, and yeah, you use them more than I do. Playing cards. Yeah, no, I love doing things with uh, with uh, with playing cards. And um, and Sal has a couple of things that that I like to do. Uh, you know, um, regularly. Um, yeah. Let me see if I can get the name. Cause after, after, you know, I, I make notes on these things, and um, right, right. Yeah, don't I think worry about he has the four, five, I think he has like the Sal has this uh, four, five, six packet trick. I do a variation of that. Uh, Paul Hallis has mm-hmm. uh, one effect called one for Rovi that I. Do. Uh, in fact, when Paul came down here, uh, he did a he did a, a, a workshop, a lecture in in, in my house. And um, and I sh- shared with everybody my version of it, uh, which adds another layer or two to to his uh, one for Rovi effect. Um, but that's one I like to do a, a lot. Um, there, I didn't I didn't, uh, I didn't realize the Paul Alice lecture was at your actually at your house. Yeah, we, yeah, we did it in my house for some reason. Well, that's cool. uh, the, the Ring Forty Five Club down here, we. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. We couldn't use the the, the van. I, I don't know what was going on. I don't remember. So I just said, forget. You know, I I knew uh, Paul through um, through um, the. Um, oh gosh, I'm blanking out. Um, PEA. The PEA. <laughs> you read my mind, Bill. Through the PEA. So um, I just ha- I just said, just come to my house, and we did the, the lecture in my house. It was really cool. But yeah, his one does an effect. He does a card effect called One for Rovi. I have a, a version of that that I love to do. Some Sal Piacente stuff. Um, Juan Tamares, you know, has a um, couple of effects that I enjoy doing. Um, and uh, also, um, somebody that I think people purchase this guy's stuff, but I don't know if they really. Um, appreciate some of the things this guy puts out, and that's uh, Devin Knight. Um, Devin Knight has a couple of things that are go-to things for me, man. I do them every chance I get. Um, yeah, I mean, Devin's put out some really, really killer work. Yeah, he's got a couple of things that I use a lot. Um and um I think with some of his stuff you uh, I don't know, you kind of you kinda of know his background a little bit and you can uh you can kinda of read between the lines and see how those some of the his some of the things he's putting out can be used in different ways, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's uh Well, you trained with uh Oh man. Or worked a lot with Owl Man back in the day. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he's got a couple of PDFs that he put out there that have some Owl Man stuff uh, with it. Um, but I, I I use some of his things as well. And uh, Chris Gold, you know Christopher Gold, who mm-hmm. uh, from Al- Alchemy Moon, and now he's 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 a good friend of mine. And uh, but I love his work. I love Chris's work and. Uh, yeah, there's so, some Mark Starving uh, stuff I just absolutely adore. <laughs> oh, you know, I I still use some old school stuff like uh, that that Chris, um, you know, like the Hypno Card and just old school Alchemy Moon stuff that uh, you can carry around with you, like the Sanctum, the Sanctum Card, Sanctum Two and Three, 
which yeah, were cool. uh, Chris, Christopher Gould's, uh, you know, creations, really. Um, are, yeah, I got, I, I, I got two. One never got put up. One, one got put out and then recalled. Or something was wrong with it. Well, Sanctum, like I, I, I got a ton of Sanctum 3 stuff here because, you know, Chris, my friend, I've been, I go to England, we hang out. and But uh, but uh, Sanctum uh, 2, I, I, I carry it with me. I still carry it with me, you know. It's uh, so some of the, some of these things are great. Um, you know, I think uh, Paul Cananza just put out a bunch of his, uh, or just did a sale or something on some of his uh, pocket pocket cards. Yeah, this kind of great same stuff out there. same line of uh, kind of same line of thought, just different stuff, you know. Yeah, there's some great stuff out there. I mean, there's some you know stuff some... out there that that's real workers that I don't think people ever really took seriously or looked at, you know? Well, you know, a lot of the hobbyists, and, you know, there's nothing wrong with, the, you know, having magic mentalism as a hobby, of course. Uh, I think it's great. But the 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 big interest is in the new stuff, you know, what's what's coming up, what's the new thing, you know? If you are if you're out there performing and working, you're not that concerned with new stuff. Of course, you look into it, it's exciting, it's like Christmas, you know. Uh it's fun to look at the new things coming out. But you have things that you already work with, you know, that are your, mm-hmm. some of your go-to things. But, um, but yeah, a lot of people are very interested in the new. What's coming up? What's the new thing? You know, what's the new release? And um, and I, hey, I find that fun too. You know, I look at these websites and, and look at stuff. I get Doc Hilford's emails. You know, I find that interesting. So, but a lot of it, I end up not incorporating into the work I already do. You know, sometimes one thing comes out and that another thing comes in, you know, but for the most part I've been already kind of doing stuff for a while, so I have like a group of things that I kind of uh, bring in and out of a performance, whether I'm doing, um, you know, a, a, a party or a corporate thing or whatever, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it just depends on, a lot of times it depends on what, you know, what market we're working. Yeah, yeah. You know, because some of the metaphysical stuff, I won't even think about bringing to certain, you know, certain events. So it's just it's wrong, you know. Yeah. But and then other things, you know, and some of the, uh, the stuff I'd bring to those events, I wouldn't bring to a metaphysical event. So it's kind of it's kind of different, actually. You know, I'm looking around my my warehouse here, seeing what I got laying around that I haven't we seen in a while. We need a video tour of your warehouse, Bill. It's ridiculous. I need to just bunch of buy my shit so I can pay for this crap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'd be interesting to see it. That's all yeah, right. When that, I, Bill, when that Bill Montana documentary comes out, everybody's going to see yeah. everything. So. <laughs> yeah, they ain't ready for that, man. The real Bill Montana. Deep. Yeah, they ain't ready. They ain't ready for that one, dude. We're going to do some treasure hunting on that one. <laughs> We're going to have cameras on uh, Bill's face as he wakes up in the morning, and we're going to follow him around as he gets his first six cups of coffee and a <laughs> few cigarettes and, you know. <laughs> first cup of, yeah, Cuban coffee. We'll I can use some of that right about now. We'll have, a little, we'll have a little drone following him around, you know. <laughs> it's going to be very watch exciting. Me, watch me get wired on some Cuban coffee and go to work. <laughs> I'm looking forward. Hey, man, let me tell you something. I mean, that's got to go in. The fact that you come down here to Miami and you drink Cuban coffee like you're, you know, you're drinking a cafe latte or something. <laughs> that stuff is hardcore, man. People share that. You know, there's little cups of Cuba, Cuban coffee. This year was like six those. people. I drank the whole thing and ordered another. Yeah. <laughs> you drank two of them. Uh, I, sh- I should have gotten video of that. I mean, it's. Actually, it's actually I was on my third, but I think I got cut off. <laughs> man, that's uh, that's hardcore. But uh, but yeah, that's Cuban tasty, coffee man. is great. Good coffee. You, you, got, you got good stuff down in Miami, man. Yeah, come on down. Come on. You got some good down. ham sandwiches down there too, man. And more ham things were tasty. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's good food everywhere, man. Good food in Vegas, that's for sure. Oh yeah. 
Where was mm-hmm. that uh, buffet we went to? Where was that, the hotel? I was trying to remember Man- that. The other Mandalay time. Bay. Mandalay. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Mandalay Bay. Oh, man, that buffet. Oh, it's good. Lord but have mercy. Phenomenal. <laughs> really wasn't that much for as big a crowd as we had. I mean, we had, I don't know, what, six of us? Yeah, talk about a metaphysical experience, man. You want to have a metaphysical experience, go eat at that uh, Mandalay Bay buffet. <laughs> yeah, that was oh, a total man. foodgasm. I think... Uh, that was good. The Bellagio was good. Uh, the one we ate last year, the well, first year that we were out there, the second year we were out there, I was out there, your first year out there. On the yeah, Tom, was having, the Tom was having a, 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 a religious experience with that buffet. That sweet sour sauce was banging, dude. <laughs> Remember, we walked away, and he just kept eating, I and mean, the guy just wouldn't stop. He was savoring every bite, and... It was just a religious experience for him, and we just kind of we we scoffed our food. You know, we were we ate so we much. We scoffed and went back to gambling. Yeah, and Tom uh, yeah. ended up talking to the chef, and the chef agreed to teach him some stuff. Oh man, but it was so so good. I mean, who could who could blame him for doing that? I mean, he was just savoring the food, having a religious experience there. <laughs> but it was so good. It was really good, Mandalay Bay. That's right. I had forgotten. Mm-hmm where it was. Mm-hmm. I could visualize it, but I couldn't remember the name. Yes, yeah, just you know, down from the uh, Luxor there on the Luxor side of New Vegas. And... Yeah, I mean, last last time we went, it was the Luxor buffet, and but this one was better, in my opinion. Well, it's interesting, too, the, the, the top hat and wand. If you're at the Luxor, and you look out the, like, the if you're in the front of Luxor, and you look straight across, you know, across that little highway there, you'll see top hat and wand. It's in that little shopping center. Oh, yeah. Well, it's you walk the, out. The car you, museum. Yeah, you walk out of Top Hat and Wand, and you look out, and boom, there's that Luxor Pyramid right there, right? Yeah, it's, right kind, of, it's kind, kind of it's kind of a nice area. place to actually nice place to work actually. Can't yeah. wait to go back. Yeah, we'll get back there soon enough. Yeah, it's a, it's always a fun time out there. Spend a week and do an event or two. In a a buffet, man, in the buffet. Fantastic. The buffets. (laughs) Usually eat more than one if I can. All right, guys. Okay. I have to uh, be going, and uh, thank you for uh, having me on the sidecast. You you guys have been having some great shows. I've been listening, and I've been enjoying it. Um, And uh, I'm looking forward. What, What do you guys have coming up next? Uh, we'll do the regular Sunday program for um, metaphysical program for sale, mm-hmm. and then next what week about, we'll have another. We'll have another sidecast. All right. Is, do you have a guest already, or you still Not working yet. on that? Well, we're still working on. We're always still working. Still almost last minute on this. Yeah. Good man. Everybody well, thank you. Because we try, we try to get guys that actually you know perform and work and do things. Yeah. Well, thanks, guys. It was fun chat. Hey, not a problem. Well, thank you, Alex, for being on the show and uh, for your input. And uh, it's a great way to uh, chat and talk about what's going on in the world of, of psychic entertainment. So uh, remember, uh, we could definitely use the help. Um, if you're looking to help us and donate, uh, just email Bill at Bill at, Bill at BillMontana.com. And uh, you'll get that information. And uh, and for any of you who have creations coming up and you want us to check it out and uh, where it could potentially be uh, reviewed on the show, uh, go ahead and uh, just uh, email Bill at the same address. All right, so until next time, we will see you guys later.